Welcome back! I am happy that the glorious land of YouTube decided to return for another episode. I am Shunrin, aka the friggin' Iron Man, and I am here to bring you another build spotlight. Today, we are going to expand on what we had planned on doing. We had our tree farm going here so that we could do a solid fuel boiler. Today, we're going to do a liquid boiler. Ooh. Yeah, so in order to do that, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go with the basic biofuel setup. Biofuel is an extremely powerful substance for the liquid boiler, as it does tend to burn one of the hotter liquids for it. It gives it a lot more fuel. You can also see that I did off-camera, went ahead and expanded this back to do five tracks. Wasn't really a big deal. Don't really plan to do a lot of stuff off-camera, but just wanted to show you what that looked like. It's the exact same, just bigger, obviously. So we got... Uh, we got our boiler pig mascot hanging out here. Everything's looking good with the solid fuel setup. I'm liking this. We're still running nice and smooth. So, uh, except for the fact that we're not. Oh, because the cell's probably full. Yeah, we're full of power. <laughs> that is going to be one of the things about boilers. You will find that when you have a boiler and it's got, it's putting out power, it's going to put out power very fast. And if you don't have, you know, use for it. That's the only drawback in terms of boilers, is if you don't have the use for the power, it's just going to go to waste, really. Uh, all this steam here, now the boiler, you can see it's still getting charcoal, it's still burning, it's still making steam, but it's not going anywhere. It's still going to burn your fuel up. But then again, it's free, because you have, you know, infinite source of wood and charcoal going on over here, so it's not like you're losing anything, it's just that it's going to waste. So, if you, this is one of the things, if you have a, a huge abundance of need for power, this is going to be the way you want to go. If you just ha have a need for power, you know, basic power setup, then we can do one of those later on down the road. Maybe I'll do some biogas engines. Um, they also run off of biofuel and everything like that. So, let's get going. I think we're going to set this up over here. As a matter of fact, we can just do a mirror setup. Um, I'll just set up the thing right over here. Let's start off with the boiler this time because we've already got most of what we need here already. So we're going to grab a liquid firebox this time. There we go. And we're going to place it... Eh, let's just do it nearby. Let's do it uh, Let's do it kitty corner here. Kitty corner? Why is it called kitty corner? Is this because cats get in the corner? Or is it because of some guy had his wife and her name was Kitty and she was sitting in the corner a lot and he coined the term maybe because... Her name was Kitty, or her nickname was Kitty, or I don't know. Anybody, anybody that knows why it's called Kitty Corner, put it in the comments below. I'll read it. I'd go look it up myself, but I'm not sure I could find it. I'm kind of lazy that way. <laughs> All right, so we got the liquid boiler. This is no different than the solid boiler setup, except for liquid fireboxes instead of solid fireboxes. And it finishes up just like that. The internal thing looks a lot, the, a lot the same, really, if you look inside of it. It's got all the slots, except for the, the steam boiler, the solid boiler, has slots here for fuel pieces. So the charcoal is going to come in here. Excess charcoal will get stacked up in here if you were putting more than one stack in there. Instead of having a solid piece in the middle, it's got this liquid tank right here. And this is still the water tank. This is still the steam. This is still the heat. That's the only difference. And the only difference in the crafting is going to be liquid Whoop. there we go it's going to be before if you'll recall we had the, the solid fuel firebox was the furnace and the fire charge and surrounded by clay this time we need extra things we need a bucket we need some steel plates and we need some iron bars and as i mentioned before the steel plates are just four steel in a rolling machine gives you three of the plates and then the fire charge, of course, is going to be your coal or your charcoal, and then your gunpowder and your blaze powder. And then the iron bars are just going to be six iron, and gets you 16 of them, so you're going to have extra. And then, of course, the bucket's just three iron or other type of stuff, depending on what mods you got installed. And then, of course, the furnace is just rocks. Whee! <laughs> Sour both those rocks if you don't have enough of them, but I don't know why you wouldn't. So that's going to be your, your solid fuel, or your liquid fuel, rather. It's going to be a little more expensive, not going to lie. But uh, 
much more worth it in the end here. And we're going to do the aqueous and the water setup just like we did underneath for the other one. I'm going to go ahead really quick here and see if we can just place it right against the bottom of the thing because I'm actually kind of curious about that now. So let's go ahead and stick some water up in here. And bonk. Ah, yeah, look at that. You don't even need the pipe underneath that I put before. Water's already just going straight in. I like it. So, just to surround it completely, because why not? And then we are going to get... Oh my god, we... Everybody... YouTube land meets my fiancé. Tag name Zhangda. Fantastic. You made it into a video, hun. Congratulations. Oh my god, we in the middle of a video. I like it. So, not even going to edit. Don't even care. Just going to roll with it. Hasn't even watched my first video yet, so who cares? <laughs> you think significant other is required by law. I think there's some sort of law out there that requires them to always watch and support everything you always do, even if it's horrible and horrendously stupid like YouTube videos. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't leave. Don't turn off the video. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't turn it off. We're not done. We are not done here. Okay. So, we got water coming in. Here's our liquid boiler. And the liquid boiler is going to run off of biofuel, as I mentioned earlier. And the quickest way to do that is going to be, if we look into how to get biofuel, the quickest way to get biofuel is going to be in a still. And if we look up the still, we're going to make a still, and it's going to take biomass and ferment it into biofuel, which we need a fermenter for the biomass. It's a forestry machine. You get a sturdy casing, which is going to be eight bronze in a circle. And then you're going to get your four redstone and your four glass. Not horribly expensive. And the way it works is you put any sort of, or you put biomass into it. And I'll show you that in a few moments here. And then we'll make a still as well. Or I'm sorry, we'll make the fermenter as well. My brain runs a lot faster than my mouth, guys. Just FYI. You'll learn that very quick. Bronze gears, otherwise it's the same recipe as the still is, just that instead of redstone in the corners you need bronze gears, which is just bronze around a stone gear. There you go, bam. Fermenter, still. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to just, we're just going to plunk them down. Bonk. Bonk. Because why not? It doesn't even matter. Actually, you know what? It does matter. I'm going to move these a little bit here. Fermenter. Still. Let's actually put these on this side. And then what we're going to do here is I'm actually going to tap into the aqueous under here. Because the fermenter, in order to operate to make biomass, is w what we're going to do to get the biofuel to put in the boiler, you got to get biomass, which the still turns biomass into biofuel. So to get biomass, we have to ferment things. And you can ferment any organic substance. You can ferment, you know, um, sugarcane reeds. If you want, if you had a sugarcane farm, you could ferment wheat. You could ferment anything that's a farmable biomass substance in this fermenter, the, they give varying amounts of biomass per item, but the, quick, the thing that gives the most biomass, at least in 1.4.7, which is what I'm running as I mentioned last video, not sure if that changes to 1.5, is going to be tree saplings, and guess what? We have a giant tree farm! Ha! <laughs> so we're going to just tap into that, and so for the solid boiler, of course, we're using the wood. For the liquid, or for the, um, liquid boiler, we're just going to use tree saplings, because that's going to be the easiest thing, because we're getting those anyway. So for the purpose of the demonstration. So if you don't make the solid boiler, but you want to make the liquid boiler, make the tree farm anyway. And that's all explained in the last video. Just go back and watch it. Do it. Go. I'll wait. Go ahead. Not going anywhere. I could even sing a little ditty. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, that should give you plenty enough time to pause this video so you can go back and watch that. So, for the fermenter to operate, of course, as I mentioned, we're going to be putting sap, uh, tree saplings in here. And it needs water and it needs um, some sort of fertilizer. So, to get its water, I'm actually just going to tap into the... Uh, 
we had the aqueous down here from the last video, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap into the aqueous that's already down here and pull water out of it for this as well. So the quickest way to do that is I'm going to get underneath of the thing, and this is going to be a little tricky, but hey. There we go. Whoop. Yeah. Sweet. Aqueous outputs from all faces except for its front-facing side, which includes the bottom. So we have the top piping out to the boiler. Going to just pipe out the bottom from here for the for this purpose. And let me get some... I'm actually going to run with Liquidux, I think. I like Liquidux better anyway. Showed you how to make this last episode, but just in case you don't recall, it's just going to be the hardened glass with two copper on either side. Hardened glass, of course, is you to get an induction smelter, which is a... Uh, thermal expansion machine, because Liquidux is thermal expansion, and you just get two crushed obsidian dust or pulverized, whichever depending on the machine you use, and one lead gets you two of the glass. And if you don't have thermal expansion, of course, you can just still continue to use the uh, the waterproof piping. Any waterproof piping will work just fine. Does not even matter in the least. So now we're going to run this over here. Well, it does matter to a degree, but hey. So, let's see here. We'll have the water input from underneath. There we go. Copper, oh my god, I better mine that really fast. It's resources, I don't want to waste... Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, oh. Now we cover all this up again, because, hey, we like to be neat. And now we have water coming in. Ha! And you can see on the outside display, it's going to have a little water level raised to show you how much water is in there. And now that we're done with that, we are going to come in here and we need to get fertilizer going. So to get fertilizer going, I'm actually going to go in this side of the... Well, no drat. Hang on a second, guys. This is the bottom input. And so we actually need the water to come up this way, I think. Simple change, not a big deal. Hello? There we go. Okay. So the bottom input is where the fertilizer is going to come in. So let's go ahead and get a pipe set up over here. And I'm going to continue along with last episode, the way that I was using the um, logistics piping. So we're just going to stick with that for now because I've already got that going. I think what I'm going to do is this episode, since last episode we were doing logistics piping, and this episode I'm going to do logistics piping because that's what we already have going on. And then I think what we'll do is next episode, I will go ahead and revisit this whole setup, and I will change everything over to applied energistics so that you can see all that. It, it, it's better anyway. Oh, we have so much charcoal going on. We have so much wood going on and so much charcoal that this thing just isn't even keeping up anymore. Look at this. Just got a constant stack of charcoal in here. I love tree farms. They're so fast and furious. You will have an excess of charcoal doing it this way. There's a better way to do this. It's just you craft it as you need it with the setup. But uh, again, next episode we'll get into that. This is just your basic setup for now. Let's get the supplier pipe. We'll put you here. Shouldn't need the provider pipe right now. There we go. And we are going to change this over to... Okay, hang on, let's check and see. We need to put fertilizer in here. You can get fertilizer with appetite and sand, or you can surround it by ash and appetite. I think that's all you can... Oh, so saltpeter and sand and dirt. Just a little bit of fertilizer. I think you can use other stuff too, actually. Let me see if I can double-check on that really quick here. Because appetite 
makes fertilizer and you have to go mining for that, but it gets you a ton of it. I mean, it doesn't use it hardly very quick at all. Like this fermenter here, one appetite will last it probably, if I'm not mistaken, like half a stack of saplings, which takes forever to ferment anyway, but let's just see really quick here. Fermenter. Usages. Click, hit the letter U for that by default. That's the recipe. Why did it, oh. Oh, because you need it in the recipe. Okay. New plan, bio. And recipe. Squeezer. Fermenter, here we go. Ah. Compost. Oh, yes, compost. Of course. How did I forget compost, guys? What is that? Compost is just wheat surrounded by a piece of dirt. And you know what? That's what we're going to do. That's going to be your sustainable way. You don't want to have to go digging out and looking for all kinds of appetite. Here's how we're going to do this. Um, so if you had fertilizer, I'll show you guys both. We'll just do that really quick. I'll just do both. So we're going to come over here, and I'm going to get another barrel place down over here next to everything else. Oh, yeah, we will need to provide our pipe. Look at that. I was totally wrong. Oh. No, it's not what we want. All right, let's do this. Put the provider pipe here. Whoop. Let's get down here. There we go. Fantastic. We'll get another barrel. We're actually going to need two barrels, so I'm actually going to need to do that again really quick. Provider pipe. Basic piping on top. And let's grab sand. And appetite. There we go. So you're assuming that this is your sorting system inside your main base, right? And that everything that you mine is coming back out of here. So this is like your storage system in your basement of your base or something to that effect. And you are just drawing out of it with these pipes because these pipes are freaking amazing. I like applied energistics better, but like I said, next episode we'll get into applied energistics and I'll show how to rearrange everything. We will rearrange all the world, all the days. What's with this daytime and weather, or nighttime and weather? I don't like it. Not good for YouTubing. Maybe it's good for YouTubing. Maybe you're that kid that played out in the rain in the mud puddles. I know I was. Anyways. Has nothing to do with anything, so as usual, I would argue, has everything to do with it. Mascot got big doing good. What's up, buddy? Hanging out. Does he need a bro pig up on top of the liquid one, guys? Bro pig? Or do we need something else up on there? We'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, da -dum -dum -dum. So what we're going to do is we come over here, and we get into this, and we get down here, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a... Crafting logistics pipe, and we are going to take an auto crafting table, and we're actually going to bury this down here like so. Crafting logistics pipe. I haven't really gotten into the logistics pipes too much this time because I did get into them last time, but let me go ahead and cover them really quick. Logistics pipes are automatic pipes. They know how to do various functions and various things. On their own, logistics pipe systems can see other pipes in the system, and so they know how the other one works. So the, your basic logistics pipe is you put it at every intersection so it knows where to route things. It's the basic router. You can tell it, hey, keep these things in this inventory, or it knows when it gets something where to send it. And you're going to take your diamond pipe, which is two diamond on either side of a glass, and... As you can see here, I'll just go ahead and show you that too. And it gets you eight of them, and then one of those pipes, and then four glass, two redstone, and two golden gears or two golden chipsets will get you the basic pipes. So you get one stack of pipes out of one recipe of diamond pipes, basically. 
the logistics pipes are pretty good that way. The diamond chip or the golden chip sets are actually cheaper because they only require one gold a piece, but you have to use an assembly table and lasers and you need power for that. So most likely you're just going to do the golden gears, which is four gold around the iron gear, which is four iron around the stone gear, and that'll get you your basic pipes. And then we're using requester, or no, we're not using requester, sorry. We're using provider pipes, which is one glowstone over a basic pipe. We are using supplier pipes, which is two lapis lazuli on either side of it there. You can see it when it pops up. The extra thing showing there just because of other mods, but you're gonna, probably going to just use two lapis lazuli on either side. And then now we're using an auto crafting pipe, which we didn't use last time because we didn't have a use for it last time. And the auto craft or the crafting pipe, where's the basic one? There it is. It's going to be two glowstone on either side. And then what we're going to do here is you've got to grab your recipe because it's an auto crafting table, which is just an auto, which is just one regular crafting table with gears around it, and just regular wooden gears. So you need to make a regular crafting table, regular wooden gears, which is just four sticks. And then you get your recipe. So we're going to get two sand, and we're going to get an appetite here. And we're going to put it right here like this. And you just put these on the table, and the table just knows these. And then what you do is you can see that the fertilizer recipe pops up. And we're going to right-click the pipe, and we're going to click the import button, and it will just know, hey, this is what's on this autographing table. Because logistics pipings are just, they just know how to interact with the auto crafting build craft stuff so everything's looking good there so basically what that does is that pipeline leads all the way back to our barrels over there under the ground um the pipes go along if you want to check that out exactly how i set this up again rewatch last episode i'll wait <laughs> my lovely singing voice i know it's terrible just like my regular voice but anyway we're, we're gonna roll with it this is the default route, as shown by this pipe here, default route, yes. Anything it doesn't know what to do with goes in this chest. So if it crafts too much fertilizer, it will just go back to that chest. But we have a provider pipe underneath, so it can provide out of that chest as well. So it will only craft what it needs. And so anytime we need fertilizer, we can just go ahead and tell it to keep a stack in here. So if we grab a stack of fertilizer... Except for, you know, I got to misclick a couple times. What's a YouTube video without a few misclicks? We'll right click this, say keep a stack of fertilizer in here, and it will immediately go through. And you can see that the sand and the. Yep, there we go. It was really fast. If you didn't see it, rewind it and pause it and watch it slow motion. But the sand and the appetite came in here really quick and immediately dumped into the bottom of this thing which is fantastic. And it only reads it as fast as it comes in, and the pipe, there's a slight delay, so it made one extra recipe, which came back in this chest, as we showed you before. So basically it said, hey, I need a stack of appetite, and every time some, there's a stack of fertilizer, and every time fertilizer came in here, it sent back, hey, I only have this much, and so it kept sending back through this crafting pipe here. And so it crafted one extra recipe because that's how long it took to go through the pipe and up into the thing. So no big deal. That's why you have the, the excess overflow barrel set up. Now we're going to get our liquid ducts going again. Again, you could just use... You could just simply use your waterproof regular piping. But I like the liquid ducts. So that's what we're doing. And this is going to be spitting out any biomass and putting it into the still here. Because that's how we're getting the biofuel. And then what you need is, this needs a redstone signal. So you grab a lever, and you put it here, and you flip it on, and everything's hunky-dory. So, once we start getting biomass, that's, that'll be how that goes. And the last thing we're going to need is our tree saplings. So we're going to dig down... Uh, we'll just go down this side again. That's fine. And so we're going to use a... Let's see, let's use our basic piping. Let's do this a little bit differently. Basic piping, like that. And then we're going to grab a sandstone, because it doesn't connect to inventories. Sandstone piping up one. Gold over one. And then we are going to grab our supplier pipe. 
like so. And we are going to grab a sapling. And again, since all that connects underground to the barrels over there, once we right click on here and we say, hey, keep a stack of saplings in here, then you will see after a moment they will come up through the pipes. Come on, game. Don't make a liar out of me. There we go. Come straight out of the barrels over there from the tree farm. Now we are getting... We've got our fertilizer, we've got our saplings, we've got our water. All that's left is to supply this thing power. And what better way to get power than to run it from our power system we've already got set up? Ha <laughs> ha. That is so funny that we did that in the... Didn't, didn't mean to work it out that way, but hey, it did. So let's grab some conduits. Redstone conduits are made like thus. Recipe. You get your redstone energy conduit from putting molten redstone into an empty conduit. The empty conduit itself is two electrum around the hardened glass we talked about. The electrum itself is made out of electrum dust, which is a blend of gold and silver. If we can. There we go. One gold dust, one silver dust gets you two electrum dust. And it occurred to me last video, and I had to go back and watch and see that I actually did mess it up another fail because you know this is all brand new series guys i love the glitches it's so much fun but the molten the molten redstone is actually comes in by you put redstone through a magma crucible it's another it's another thermal expansion machine you put redstone in there you get 0.25 millibuckets from one redstone so you'll need two redstone per conduit and so you, you take this liquid transposer machine, you make the magma transposer or magma crucible machine, and you set them next to each other, and that's how you do it. And so I didn't explain that last episode. Sorry about that. All kinds of fail, all the days long. So now we're just going to run this conduit over here. Because both of these machines actually need power. And if you're just setting up with a new world and you don't actually have the boiler. Oh, by the way, for the conduit to actually bring the power out, you got to wrench it. See how the little arrow switches? Fantastic. So to get the um, to get the power going, if you don't, if you have a brand new world and you don't have access to the solid fuel boiler, and you need power going, you want to just make a Stirling engine or a hobbyist engine. Um, my favorite is actually the uh, steam engine. I should probably look it up in any eye instead of the uh, so the three best engines to go with, actually, you're going to go with your hobbyist steam engine, which is three gold nuggets and gold-plated gold gears, which are nuggets around the stone plate. A nugget is just one gold bar broken into nine nuggets. So it's a pretty inexpensive engine, just like any other engine recipe. The hobbyist steam engine is pretty nice in that you supply it water, again, with the aqueous probably, um, or any other pumping system. You supply it water and you put charcoal and it puts out two millijoules per tick. Uh, you can go with the... Steam engine, if you have it here, and I'm going to apologize, guys. I'm pretty sure this is another, um, this is, I think this is the thermal expansion one as well, just because the conductance coil is what I want to say. But this steam engine is a little bit different. It takes copper and copper gears, which is apparently made copper gear around an iron ingot. That's a little different. I haven't seen that gear before. Huh. Maybe that's just that particular one. There we go. Stone gear, four copper, right around it. So some fashion of copper gear and three copper and a redstone transmission coil, which is a tin, or oh, silver, I guess, sorry. Silver bar with two redstone on it. And that'll get you that steam engine. It works the exact same way as this steam engine. Needs water and charcoal or coal to burn in it. So those are the two easiest ways to do it. Or you can go with the Sterling engine, which is just straight cobblestone. And this only puts out so much. The, the reason I don't use this one is because this one can explode if you leave it alone too long. Again, you supply it water and charcoal, and if it works too long, it will blow up. These two won't blow up. This one doesn't even have a chance of blowing up. This one here that we were just looking at, it can overheat, and you got to give it a hit with a wrench to get it going again. But uh, you're going to want to go with some form of steam engine initially if you don't have access to power. I'm just doing this because we already have this. And so that's just the quickest way to do it. No, look, we already have biomass. That whole time I was talking, it, I just talked all the day. Did you see that? Wow. It got nighttime. Everything died. The game's like, come on, shut up. Get on with it. 
game's like, I don't have all day, and I'm like, actually, you do have all day, because, you know, that's it's kind of, you're kind of on my time here. But hey, no judgment. So, you can see that while we were talking here, the biomass actually fermented here. The pipes kept us filled up with fertilizer and oak saplings. The nice way of doing that auto-crafting setup is because this is constantly running. You're eventually going to get an overflow right here of charcoal. This will eventually overflow. And it will eventually, if it overflows, it's going to end up going back into that default route chest. Um, you can do an auto-crafting setup. You can put that same auto-crafting pipe that we put on the auto-crafter underneath the grass there on one of these on the top of these uh, furnaces, if you wanted to, you could do that. The reason I didn't do that is because these furnaces burn so slowly and you need charcoal so fast in the beginning for the solid boiler that you might as well just do it this way to have it constantly running. This is always running. But if you do the auto crafting pipe, auto crafting logistics pipes on top of each of these furnaces, you'll probably do just fine. Um, faster furnaces, if you had power for a faster furnace, why is this engine not working? Oh, somehow I hit that. Okay. There we go. So if you had a faster furnace, you could set a crafting pipe up on it really fast, and it would only burn charcoal as it needed. And that's actually the best, most efficient way to do it. But we don't have that set up right now. When we get next episode with the applied energistics, I'll show you how to do that. Or even maybe at the end of this episode, I'll switch these to auto crafting pipes, and we'll see how that works out. Let's see what happens. Anyway, so this pulled only the sap only the saplings and only the fertilizer it needed so it's keeping this full up fantastic spit out the uh, biomass in this pipe or in the liquid duct and the biomass came in the still and all you need for the still is just the biomass coming in and it's already making biofuel look at that fantastic and actually the problem with this setup is going to be that I don't think that one of these is going to burn fast enough look at the whole time that I was yapping away it was probably a good five or six minutes yapping 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 everybody's probably sick of my voice by now well eh, we're gonna roll with it I'm like that New Yorker guy hey what's the matter with you and everybody's like shut up I hope you're in New York and I hope you're watching this I hope you want to come kick my ass now but we're gonna roll with this and we only have this much biofuel not even half a tank on this guy so really the best way to do it is actually to have multiple stills. So we're just going to drop a few more here. There we go. That should do it. And we're going to connect you. And let's go ahead and grab the conduit again. We're going to run the conduits underneath, like so. There we go. Now they all have power and they're all getting the biomass. And we're going to run our liquid ducts. Out, 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 and out. There we go. Actually, that doesn't matter in the least. Put it back. Who cares? So, now we got the liquid all running the way that we want it to. All we need left to do is to supply these with a redstone signal. And as, if you'll recall from last episode, I'm going to keep plugging last episode. I had a lot of fun with it. It was a lot of fail, but it was a lot of fun. My first episode ever. I'm going to keep plugging it for all the days. If you'll remember, we used this jacketed cabling, freestanding jacketed cabling. We're going to do the exact same thing here. And we're going to run this underneath. This will not interfere with your redstone conduit, so don't worry at all. And because I didn't show you how to make these either, I'll just cover that really quick here. Jacketed cabling is a redstone, red power signal thing. Jacket, not jacket. What's a jacket? Anybody know what a jacket is? Leave it in the comments below. So any jacketed cabling is just a red alloy ingot surrounded by the covers of that type. So you get a cobblestone jacketed wire out of cobblestone covers, stone out of stone covers, the one I'm using right now is just the wood jacketed one, oak wood jacketed one, there it is. So you just need oak wood covers out of jacketed wire. 
the out, red alloy ingot itself is one iron or copper and four redstone in an alloy furnace, which is made out of just clay bricks and fueled by some sort of fuel source. So it's pretty easy to make. And to get those covers, you need to use a handsaw. Let's check those out real quick. So you make a handsaw and you slice up whatever material it is. Again, cobblestone for cobble jacketed, stone for stone, etc. so forth. And it's ruby, sapphire, diamond, green sapphire hand saws, and you just slice them up into little pieces. So it's not that big a deal. And then, of course, we need our lever. There we go. And look, we've already got some, uh, got a little bit of biofuel in each of these. If you wanted to be super efficient about this, you could build tanks. But really, once if this filled up, then these would stop putting out the biofuel and they would just fill up their own internal tank and they would stop working. And the biomass fills up and it would stop working. And the fermenter is just, oh, the fermenter is working overtime now. Look at that. It's fantastic. But it's keeping these relatively full, so I think we're doing okay. It's keeping this one the fullest first because it's the first in the line, but they're all getting, they're all getting some sort of amount of it, so we're doing good. I think when I, when I did this through the test world, I think we had, uh, I think I had, a line of four of these and seven of these, I want to say. Something to that effect. But this should be good just to get the thing going, just so you can see. And this is, again, one of those cases that once, once this fills up, once this gets fully hot, then uh, once it gets fully hot, then it won't use it hardly at all. So you can already see that it's starting to fill, starting to fill up with... Is it not starting to fill up? Oh, derp. Ha, ha. Yet another derp. Brought to you by me, the king of derping Minecraft videos. You actually have to feed this directly into the, uh, the firebox piece itself. Like so. There we go. Now we're filling up. Now we're running. So, guys, the bottom pieces, the actual firebox themselves, and this is true for both boiler, solid and liquid, the bottom boxes themselves are the input, the top parts, the boiler pieces, are the output. So if you want to get the steam out, then you put them up here like we did with the solid fuel over here. So that's the output sides, basically, in the bottom firebox of the input, as I should have known and mentioned right off because, well, we've been putting aqueouses below. So yeah, anyways. You can see that all the biofuel that we've been made so far have already drained out of these fermenters, or out of these stills. So yeah, this has got a good piece of it in there right now. Let's go ahead and drop more of these really quick. I'm going to go still. And fermenter. Let's just go ahead and drop a bunch of these really quick. So we're going to need to leave gaps. Two, three, four, and I'm actually going to go, how many is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to just do it that way, otherwise it's going to drive my crazy OCD brain insane. And I'm going to connect these up. Let's drop our lever down here. There we go. Hey, hey, there we go. And then I'm gonna need the conduit. There we are. And we're gonna need the conduit again. Oh, that's interesting. We'll just do a little underground bypass really quick here. So that everything has power. Actually, you know, I probably, if I want to be super efficient about it, I could have just brought those over from under there, but hey, whatever. Now we need to bring the water in, and because we already have a liquiduct tap, I'm just going to go ahead and string this along here as well. Maybe. Uh, guys. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Let's do it this way. 
So you'll quickly learn that the uh, fastest way to get confusing is to have multiple machines have to pop multiple things around. Because the more things you have piping around, the more chance you have of totally confusing your setup. So just be really careful the way you're setting this up. Water needs to come up between, so we're going to do it this way. There we go. Connect you guys. Water. Water. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, well. Oh, whoops. We don't want that. Okay. There we go. Now we got water coming into all the, all the uh, fermenters, and now we need to get our pipes going again. Pipe, 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 provider, crafting, supplier, there we go. Yeah, baby. Okay. Gets more and more complicated by the second, doesn't it? Ha ha ha. This is actually really messy, and it's really not a lot of ways you can do about this because the fermenters have to have four of their five sides or four of their six sides active at all times because you got the output from the mass, the input from the water, and the two under and over sides. So five of their six sides are always needed because you need to pipe stuff into each side. There's really not a lot of ways to make this not messy. So you're going to have to cross over pipes all over the place. But really, it's worth it. So what you do basically is you make an inner room somewhere. If this is under your base, if this is outside your base, make a room for this and just don't ever look at it once you get the pipe going. It's, that's how you make the aesthetics. Aesthetics sometimes are aesthetically functional. You can make them look really neat like I did with the hiding the pipes under the ground over here, but sometimes you just gotta hide the whole shebang and just bring a pipe out somewhere, so keep that in mind, people. So, we're gonna bring you over here. So we're gonna run this all the way underground, I think. So let's grab a basic pipe, right there like so. We are going to take our gold piping this way. And it's going to be a basic pipe at this intersection. And supplier, sandstone, gold. Whoop. Oh, I just messed up my guy's cart. Poor cart man. He works so hard. Slaves away all day, every day, and I come along and wreck up his stuff. He can't ever have nice things because I just got to trash it. Poor cart guy. He's fine. He doesn't care. He's an emotionless robot. Cold as the void. There we go. Pipe there. Because remember, every intersection has got to have that basic pipe. So this is actually going to be a basic pipe here. Basic pipe there. And then we're going to go gold. Nope. Whoops. So this can be gold, actually, because that's the end of the line. We're not branching off that again right now. So we're going to have basic, supplier, sandstone, supplier, gold, sandstone, Gold. Supplier and supplier. There we go. Now we're going to grab our fertilizer and our saplings. And the nice thing about the 
logistics pipes is that they only take an imprint of the item. So we can get in here, we can say, hey, fertilizer, but it doesn't actually consume it. And we can say, sabonk. Saplings on top. Fertilizer below. I am, oh, a tree grew on me. Wow. That's a new one. Well, not new, exactly. I'm sure everybody's had that happen. But in my mind, it's hilarious to think I've yap and talk and complain and moan so long that days transition and trees grow and... Man, you guys sick of my voice yet? I hope not. <laughs> ah, Lord. Okay. There we go. Make this somewhat less messy. Whoops. And then we gotta grab our levers. Just gotta output from here. There we go. Now we have four fermenters feeding eight stills. And now look at how much biofuel we got. We're keeping this thing pretty well. Looking good. Yep, they're running. So to keep a full boiler, the full 4x3x3 four by three by three boiler setup, these giant boilers need so much fuel to keep them going, it's insane. You could make the smaller boilers where it's just like one firebox and one boiler and you wouldn't need anywhere near this amount of setup. But for me, it's go big or go home. Always, always, always have to go big or go home. You know what we're going to do, actually, I think, is we're going to make a tank really quick. What should we make our tank out of, guys? Diamond blocks? Why not? For the for the most ridiculous possible, I'm making us a Zycraft tank, by the way. Is that the right valve? That's the right valve. Zycraft tank, because why not? We'll put them right here. Two, three, four, five... 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There we go. Biggest possible Zycraft tank is 12 by 12 by 12. It holds ridiculous amounts of liquid. See, what is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There we go. Zycraft tanks, just to explain to people, uh, can be made out of anything. Uh, all you need is some sort of solid material. Most things work. Dirt does not work. Glass does not work. Glowstone does work, but it counts as a glass substance. The corners have to be a solid substance, so you have to use like cobblestone works. If you want to just make the cheapest, crappiest piece of junk ever, cobblestone would work here. You could use, um, you could use raw ore. You could use wood planks, I think. Almost anything works. And then you just build the frame, and the floor has to be solid. A lot faster. But then you can use a glass substance around the sides. So you can use viewers, which there's iCraft viewers. And I'll show you guys how to make these things in just a second here. Um, glass viewers work. You can even use glowstone if you have glowstone sitting around. So the valve, need at least one valve, and it's made out of the engineering bricks, any color engineering grits, light cycoridite, dark cycoridite, red, green, and then four of the iron bars in a bucket that we covered before gets you four of these valves. One engineering brick is any sort of brick, chiseled brick, stone bricks, cracked bricks, any sort of bricks are with any color of cycoridite, 
which are cooked from zycoridite in a furnace and a redstone, so they're not really expensive. Smelts, there you go. The glass viewer is just eight glass around one iron gets you eight of these viewers, and the viewers are amazing because you can place torches against them, and because you can um, pick them back up. So, like, unlike the um, unlike regular glass that shatters unless you use a silk touch object on it, you can just pick these up with a pick, or even your fist, really. And I'm just making this tank really quick. Normally I would put more valves in this, but... Just trying to get this together really quick here without wasting everybody's time. And I don't like to edit. I like everybody to see every aspect of everything. There's people out there that are like, come on, get on with it. And then there's people that go, hey, wait a second, I wanted to see that. And I'm one of those, hey, wait a second, guys. Like, I watch people's videos, and I'm like, you know, and they're like, hey, I'm going to cut the video. I'll be back once I finish building this tank. I'm like, no, hey, I want to see that tank built, because I want to make sure that everything goes into it the way that I'm thinking about it. I'm just one of those guys. I don't know. I know that he's, I know that you stop and you show it and say, here's how I built the tank, and you look at it, and everything looks beautiful and hunky-dory. And I need to stop saying hunky-dory. I've probably said it about a thousand times. I hate that phrase. I wish there was another one I can use. Guys, what's another phrase I can use? What can I say instead of hunky-dory? Um, toodaloo, so on and so forth. I don't know. Give me some phrases, guys. I need some phrases. I need to stop saying hunky-dory. So that's one wall. And then you fill these up. And you don't have to use viewers either. You can just use straight solid. You can just make it a solid... Uh, cobblestone structure if you wanted to, all sides cobblestone, no glass viewers, as long as there's at least one valve and it's and it's a, a containment piece, then that's all you really need. Containment piece, of course, being the uh, solid box of whatever I was talking about before. And Zycraft tanks can be any size. It's the inner space that matters with Zycraft tanks. So this inside space here that doesn't have anything on it, that's what stores the liquid. And it's a multiplier factor on that inner space. So the smallest tank you can have is a 3x3x3, three by three by three, obviously, because then there would be one empty space inside. And the biggest you can get is 12x12x12, 12 by 12 by 12, which is what this is. And as I said, I go big or I go home. So that's why we have the most giant tank possible. Someday, somewhere along the lines, I want to get into Forestry Craft Bees, and I want to fill up completely one of these tanks with bee DNA. How insane would that be? A giant 12 by 12 by 12 Zycraft tank full of bee DNA. How insane and awesome looking would that be? I think it'd be insane and awesome looking, guys. There we go. Just about done here. Has anybody ever done that, by the way? Any of you guys watching this? Have you ever filled up a giant tank with some obscure liquid that looked cool as crap? Well, crap doesn't look that cool. Cool as a Egyptian harem princess dancing, belly dancing style to the beat of drums in your heart. Anybody ever made a giant cool tank that looked awesome with some obscure liquid like that, huh? I'm not sure it's happened. I think it should happen. If you've done it and you can make videos, make me a video response. I'll watch it. And don't cheat it, because I'll know. I know I'm cheating right now, but it's just for the sake of demonstration purposes. I'm not actually playing this game. This is all for all you people to know. I'm talking in real world setup. I'm not talking cheat the tank to see it. I'm talking in real world, like you have a single player or multiplayer world that you play in regularly, and you have so many bees going around from your various projects that you just filled up a tank. That's what I'd be interested in seeing. Anybody can cheat a tank of stuff. I know one guy, and if he ever watches this video, he'll know who I'm talking about. He'll know I'm talking about him. Yeah, I'm talking about you. I know one guy that he cheats so horrible in Minecraft all the time, everything he does, even in his single-player play worlds. And it's not because he cheats, he's a cheater. It's not because he's a filthy cheater, even though I call him a filthy cheater all the time, and it's hilarious, we have a good yak about it. He just kind of has attention issues. I have attention issues too, but I also have OCD like crazy. But he can't stand messing around with stuff, so he doesn't ever get out of the Iron Age. He's playing Minecraft, and you walk around his base, and everything's built out of cobblestone and wood. And uh, it looks awesome. Don't get me wrong, he's an amazing, he's an amazing decorator. 
as far as Minecraft decoration goes. He makes things look awesome, but uh, nothing's past the Iron Ages. His furnaces are still out. Are still, actually, I'm not even sure he's ever made an iron furnace. So he cheats horribly because he wants to see things, because he doesn't ever actually build them, because he's more about the decoration than anything. And that's cool. Everybody plays Minecraft for their own purposes. He'll probably never watch this video. And if he does, he has permission to come and hit me. <laughs> of course, if you do come and hit me, you'll know what'll happen, dude. But hey, whatever. We will tussle. It will be the rumble. The rumble in the Bronx. I wonder if I can get in trouble for that. Coining a movie phrase. Hmm. And yes, guys, I've been rambling because a giant tank takes forever to set up. But we're just about done here, so no big deal. Don't like to edit. Giant long videos. That's what Build Spotlights are all about. See everything happen. See all the things. Bam! Tank. And to finish this tank, all you do is you come down here and you right-click on a valve. Once you get the entire tank all built and set up, just right-click, boom, and you'll know it's done because you'll see these little green squiggly lines all over the place. And if you right-click the glass itself, you can say, hey, look, this giant 12 by 12 by 12 multi-tank stores 16,000 buckets worth of liquid. 16 million millibuckets, 1,000 millibucket to a bucket, so 16,000 buckets worth of liquid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this liquid duct here, and we are going to... Actually, I'm going to go from underneath of here. We're going to make this our steam tank, guys. What do you think of that? Oh, we're already making steam out of this thing. That is awesome. How long have we been making steam and I didn't notice, guys? Usually I'm chomping at the bit. We're at 152 degrees. So much steam. We're full on... Look at this. We're full on biofuel. We're full on biofuel. We're full on biomass. You could probably even cut this off. You could use one less still and two less of these. Generally, one still to two fermenters... Or one fermenter to two stills is usually pretty good. So you could probably do three and six would probably do fine with this giant boiler. But look at this. This is a beautiful thing. All right, let's do it this way. I'm going to click this here. Oh, we need to actually output these. No, I want you to output. Output. Thank you. Output, 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 output. There we go. Output. Output. get down here, aren't I? Hey! Oh, I'm stuck. Fantastic. Output, output, output. Connect everything. Connect all the things. All the days. All the time. You'd think I could click in one place. Bam. And we need redstone signal. Ow. Now we have a steam tank. Excess steam is... The steam down here is hitting these engines first. And any excess is coming in here. Look how fast it's filling up. 500, 56, 57, 58. We got 500 odd buckets of steam already. Look at that. So wonderful, amazing delicious thing two steam boilers this thing is i love the liquid personally the liquid one's my favorite and there's a way to do this sustainably with fuel and oil too people don't like to have to go tap oil and refine into fuel um, if you do enough forestry you can get uh, if you have extra bees installed you can do an extra bee 
that's an oily bean, he puts out oily propolis, and you can get oil that way. And there's a sustainable way to do that one, too. Maybe I'll do that at some point. If enough people want to see it, I'll show them that. But hey, look at that. Steam tanks, steam boilers, it's a beautiful thing. Amazing thing, crazy thing, wonderful thing. I need another phrase, too. I say beautiful thing too much, and I say hunky-dory too much, and I say way too much stuff too much. So... But yeah, if you guys want to see the other way that I was going to show you really quick, I can do that. Oh, we're an hour on this video already, but hey, we'll do it really fast. I need to grab a hoe. And a water bucket. And what I'm going to do is we'll just grab out a... Uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. Let's see. Two, three, four. Water right here. There we go. So the sustainable way to do this is, uh, I mentioned last video, there's a couple of ways you can make an automated wheat farm. And you can either do a machine setup. I've, I've built a machine setup. It's a fully machine automated wheat farm. Or you can use reeds if you have a sugarcane farm. You can use uh, machinery to automate the production of, of reeds, sugarcane. And you can do it that way as well. But basically what we're doing is we're making an automated... Two, three... We're making an automated uh, plant ball setup is what we're doing here. And the reason that wheat is the best for it is because you can make the, um, you have to you have to get dirt and you have to get wheat. And the wheat and the dirt makes your compost, which you can feed into those fermenters over there in order to get them to make biomass. Instead of using fertilizer, if you don't have a lot of appetite laying around for whatever reason, you can always make fertilizer instead. And fertilizer is made out of... I'm sorry, not fertilizer, compost, which is made out of wheat. Four pieces of wheat around one dirt. So if you get a wheat farm going on, then you can easily get that going. And I'm not actually going to go through the entire process of the setup. This is just so you guys can see what's up. So what you do is you make your wheat farm here. And you can do this by hand if you want to, or you can make the automated setup. If you have a mod called Thomcraft, what you do is you make golems, and the golems will automatically harvest this for you. And you can get a chest. And you can set your chest, let's say, right here. And then you can get a golem. You'll need a wood golem. I like to get the uh, perceptive guy so you can see. Most often what you do is you have... Um, a bunch of fields. You'll need more than one field. I'm just making one field just to show you. And you get your smart straw golem. You need the smart straw golem so you can replant the field when he's done. And I'm not going to show you guys how to make golems because Thomcraft is a magical mod and it's all about um, doing magical research and doing happy things. So and that's supposed to be sort of a hidden thing. You have to research how to make the magical stuff. So because it's a magical mod, I'm not going to show you how to make them be a sort of hidden thing but what they'll do is this guy will run out here and here let me bone meal this i'll just show you really quick just for some demonstration so if you bone meal a wheat field he'll run over there he'll see it's time to harvest that wheat field and he will automatically harvest it and the harvested amount will drop on the ground oh minecraft crash oh that's horrible so much terribleness Give me one second, guys. I know I don't like to pause video, but I'm going to pause video and fix this crash really quick, and I'll be back in just a second. All right, guys, thanks for being patient. I'm not sure what that crash was about. Went ahead and relaunched everything, so we are back in business for the moment. A couple minutes from the end, and everything had to die. Don't know what that's about, but... Uh, You'd think it could have waited for me for another two minutes, honestly. But anyway, if you saw that really quick, that golem just ran out. He harvested the wheat and just dropped it on the ground, but he instantly replanted. And then this golem guy ran out and picked it up, and he put it in this chest. So that's fantastic. That's how you make your automated wheat farm. 
make golems. There's a mechanical way to do it, but it takes a lot more crazy setup, and I'll show you that if you really want to see it. But then what you do is you would use your compost, like we saw earlier, which is just four wheat around one dirt to get you four compost. And dirt, what you can do is you can take the seeds from the you can take the seeds from the wheat. So what happens is the farm will go on long enough that you'll be getting wheat and you'll be getting seeds. And you can take those seeds from the wheat and you can make a plant ball, right? And you can take the plant ball and you can stick the plant ball in a macerator or a pulverizer or a rock crusher and you can turn that into dirt. So that's what it does. So one wheat farm is a sustainable way to get both dirt and wheat. And you can set the auto crafting table up like we saw over here when I did the auto crafting table underground over there. You put your crafting pipe on the automatic crafting table and you can set one up to make seeds into plant balls. You can set one over a macerator and it will automatically macerate into dirt. And you can set one up over another automatic crafting table to turn the wheat and the dirt into the compost and you can feed those in here instead. Right, and I'll actually just demonstrate that really quick here. Auto, and then we'll get a, uh, we'll get a rock crusher just for the heck of it. If you guys don't have access to rock crushers, they're super awesome. But you have to keep it fit. You have to keep it fueled. Oh, we have charcoal! <laughs> like it was meant to be. And then you can come over here and you can say... Get your auto crafting pipe. It doesn't matter what side of the um, it does not matter what side of the automatic crafting table that the auto crafting pipe touches, but it does matter for machines. So you usually put it on the top of machines, and then what you would do is you would put a supplier pipe underneath of this thing to keep the coal to keep the charcoal in it. So we'll do that. We'll grab a supplier pipe and a basic pipe and the gold pipe. We'll connect it up to our system over here. Supplier. Charcoal. We'll say keep a stack of charcoal. Basic pipe. Sandstone pipe. Gold pipe. There we go. So you set it up that way, and then you got your charcoal coming in the bottom. And then what we would do is we would take a plant ball and a piece of dirt. And if you'll recall before, we were able to... Actually, you know what? Let's do this. I'll need one more dirt. There we go. So if you'll recall before, you can take the auto crafting table and you can set this up and you can say seeds makes a plant ball. And then you can wrench this and say import and because it's an auto crafting table it will bring the recipe in. And then we can come over here and do the same thing here and we can say one dirt and four of these guys make sure your compost, wrench, import, done. But with machines you can't import. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell this that one plant ball and you get one dirt. You can click on these manually. You can say input is a plant ball, output is a dirt, because obviously this isn't a table. You can't put stuff in here. So basically you set it up this way. And now what we're going to do is if you wanted to use compost instead, instead of the fertilizer, because this is a sustainable renewable piece, then what you would do is you would get your provider pipe 
Where's the provider pipe? There we go. And you will put it underneath of the chest here. Right? And then you could run this underneath of the ground. Actually, you know what? I got a better idea. Just so we haven't actually done this yet, and this will make this really interesting, we can just pick this guy up. And let's fill this back in. And I'm going to get an ender chest, and we're going to drop an ender chest down. So if you make two ender chests, you can place this guy directly against the ender chest. And he can, he can fill the ender chest up as well. An ender chest is pretty simple to make. You will need to hit the nether for it, but you just take a chest and an ender pearl, which is, you can use a minium stone or a philosopher stone either way if you have access to that. That's only cheatable though. You get four iron makes you an ender pearl with a minium stone. Minium stone is minium shards around an inert stone. These are monster drops, so you got to kill monsters for these. And then you get four iron and a gold and four stone to get the inert, inert stone. And so what you do is you can get the inner pearl, the chest, two obsidian, and one wool, and that gets you an inner chest. So he's going to fill up that inner chest, and what we're going to do over here is you can just take your provider pipe. Actually, you know what? You can even put this in line, like this. Provider pipe. Pow. So it knows now what is in that inner chest. And so he will put seeds and wheat in this thing until it's filled, filled up. If you wanted to, you can have one golem for seeds and one golem for wheat and have two chests, but that's fine either way. And this this would draw those out, and, that, and then you would be able to go up to this pipe and get down here, and you could tell it, instead of fertilizer, keep it stocked with compost. And that would go through this, and it would auto-craft those for you as well. And it would still run. And Steam is doing amazing. We're still completely full on biofuel. God, I love this system. Everything's looking fantastic. We got already 4,000 buckets of steam in this tank. And we have a full thing over there. And to wrap up this video, everything's all done. We are all set to go. I hope you guys have all enjoyed your, your build spotlights. We had the solid fuel boiler. We had the liquid fuel boiler. Everything is perfectly fantastic. Next video, I will go through and I will remove all of the logistics piping. And we'll do it with applied energistics instead. And we'll see how that would run us as a better build. I like applied energistics a lot. Not everybody has access to it. Those people that don't should. If you don't have it, I'm going to go ahead and do it. It's free advertising, free plugging for a mod. Mod authors love that, by the way. And they uh, go get applied energistics. It's a delicious mod. It's probably one of my favorites. Where'd that other bro pig go? We need another... We need another uh, boiler mascot up here. Is that the bro pig? There's two bro pigs. There's three bro pigs. Which you was the bro pig? You know what? You're the bro pig. Come here. Come here! There we go. Bro pig! There we go. Fantastic. Pig mascots in place. Boilers running. That's how to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Build Spotlights, the first two. I was going to wait until Friday to do my next one. But I just couldn't. I had too much excitement going. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And now, I don't have a way to end this, so I'm just going to walk off into the sunset. Ha 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 ha!